So now we're going to look at mandibular molars, specifically the first and second molars. In the next video, we're going to go into the third molars. But similar as we saw in the maxillary first molars, the mandibular first molars are going to erupt around six to seven years old. And the mandibular second molars are going to come out around 11 to 13. Now if you remember the maxillary seconds, they came out around 12 years old, so it's about the same. Now unlike the maxillaries, we have and if it, we have a real cusp here, and it's called the distal cusp. So the mandibular first molars typically are going to have five cusps, while the mandibular seconds are going to have four cusps. In terms of the size of the cusp, the biggest cusp is actually the mesial buccal cusp. So we know that this is the distal, this is the mesial. So the mesial buccal cusp is going to be right about here. And then we're going to have the mesial lingual cusp next. The distal lingual cusp, the distal buccal cusp, and then the distal cusp. So again, that's So now, if you remember, I gave you a quick way to remember which is the biggest cusp based on the name. Same thing goes here, in the, the mesial buckle, we have a B here, and same with mandibular, we have a B. So just remember mandibular, because it has a B, the mesial buckle cusp is going to be the biggest cusp. It's the easiest way to remember it. Now if we're looking at the different parts, Dead in the center right here is where the central fossa is. We have in this spot right here the distal triangular fossa. And then you probably guessed that this side right here is the mesial triangular fossa. where these dots are is actually where the cusps are. And these dotted lines correlate to the tri triangular ridges of the cusp. So this is the triangular ridge. Of the mesial lingual cusp. Same thing, this would be the triangular triangular ridge of the mesial buccal cusp, the triangular ridge of the distal buccal cusp triangular ridge of the distal cusp and the triangular ridge of the distal lingual cusp. What's interesting is right here we're going to have a transverse ridge that's going to cross over and the same thing we see right here. If you remember two triangular ridges are going to make a transverse ridge. This groove right here is the mesial buccal groove. It's separating the mesial buccal cusp from the distal buccal cusp. The mesial buccal uh, groove is actually going to extend down the mesial buccal, or, or sorry, the buccal surface. So it's actually going to go like this and extend into the buccal surface. Same thing is going to happen with the lingual groove. The lingual groove is going to come down and go down the surface, the lingual surface of the tooth. Now if we look at the mandibular seconds, the mandibular second, the key giveaway is that it looks like a cross. So if you're looking at this tooth and you see a cross or a T, just know that this is the mandibular second tooth. And also the mesial buckle is going to be bigger than the distal buckle. And then of course in terms of the grooves, we have the central groove down the center. We're going to have the buccal and the lingual groove as well.
a key point to know about the mandibular first is when we're going to have a buccal pit and that's going to be associated with a mesial buccal uh, groove so there's going to be a buccal pit right about there but what's interesting is that we have this lingual groove right here, but it does not have a pit. So the lingual groove, no pit. And that is something that I would say just memorize. It's really worth knowing. In terms of the height of contours, it's going to be about the same. So, from the facial, the height of contour is going to be in the cervical third. From the lingual, it's going to be in the middle third. Now, if you remember, this was exactly the same thing we saw before in the uh, maxillary teeth. Now, if you see, I, I have written down dimensions. Another thing that's important to note is the trunk, the root trunk itself. So the root trunk from the lingual view is four millimeters. In terms of the length of the full root, from the CEJ down, it's 14 millimeters. Now, on the buccal view, it's actually a millimeter short. So it's three millimeters and 13 millimeters. So the the trunk is actually shorter on the, the buccal view. The other thing is if we're looking at the CEJ, it's relatively flat on the molar. So just keep that in mind that once you get into the molars, the CEJ is going to be relatively flat. In terms of the cusp, our lingual cusp is going to, are, are going to be typically sharper than the, uh, the buccal cusps. And in terms of alignment, if we look at the mesial buccal cusp, this is going to be more centered over the root. And the lingual, mesial lingual is going to be more in line with the lingual border of the root. So let's look at the, the mesial buccal. We see that right here is the distal cusp, so we know that this is the mesial buccal. And this cusp is basically in line with the root. <coughs> now if we look at the mesial lingual on the other hand, this cusp is not in line. It's more um, in line with the, the border of the lingual cusps. I mean, sorry, the lingual root. And as I said before, in terms of the transverse ridges, we have the mesial buccal and the mesial lingual that we're seeing in both of these, creating one transverse ridge. So we'll have one transverse ridge here, and with a distal cusp, we'll have another transverse ridge. So the same thing is seen on both of these teeth. In terms of a taper, when looking at the, um, the tooth, the crown tapers more in the lingual, and that's kind of expected because in the lingual we're going to see that additional cusp and so it's going to taper so it's going to taper also in the distal third in terms of the occlusal table if we keep in mind that there is that fifth cusp I'm trying to find the best way to draw this but it's basically going to be a pentagon so I'm going to do this as a dash. The fifth cusp kind of creates this pentagon shape. So we have a pentagon shape in terms of the occlusal table. And then if we look at the mandibular second, it's more of a rectangular shape in terms of the occlusal table. And that's kind of important because if you remember, when we looked at the, um, the maxillaries, they both were uh, had an occlusal table in the shape of a parallelogram.
the other thing is another question that usually comes up for both of your mandibulars it's going to be wider mesial distally than facial lingually this is the exact opposite of what's seen in the maxillary teeth in the maxillary teeth it's facial lingually wider than mesial distally in terms of the marginal ridges we're going to see that the marginal ridge the mesial marginal ridge is actually concave buccolingually while the distal marginal ridge is short and v-shaped so if we look at this it's kind of a v-shape right here hence why it's kind of short and v-shaped the central groove has this zigzag pattern while the central groove in the mandibular second is straight in terms of the contacts for all your your mandibular teeth it's just about the same the mesial contact is going to be uh, yeah. so the mesial contact right here is going to be at the junction of the occlusal middle while the distal contact is going to be at the middle of the crown and this is exactly the same as what's in the mac, uh, mandibular second. If we look at the root spread, it's also a wider root spread and a shorter trunk. While on the mandibular seconds, we have less of a, a root spread and the roots are longer. So that's about it for the mandibular first and second teeth. If you have any questions, comments, uh, leave them below. Also, uh, I provided a link where you can download this picture as well as uh, all the notes and a table to kind of help you understand everything. Um, so you can go download that. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, uh, you hit the subscribe button. Thank you, and uh, see you.